Hello and welcome back to my model channel. Today I will be building the ATST from Star Wars. This is a 148 scale model by Bandai Models and the molding quality is amazing. This is typical Bandai quality. Here you can see I'm using side cutters to cut the parts off of the sprues and I'm also using Revell Contactor Professional because I like the very thin metal tube that deposits very small amounts of glue. Now this model does not even require glue. It's made so well it kind of sticks together as you push it together but I like to glue it just to be sure. So we start off with uh, building the uh, main body and I'm also using Tamiya extra thin cement because it helps to sink into those cracks um, as I'm putting the model together. Just for the sake of the video I am not showing a lot of the stuff that I'm doing off camera which is cutting off the parts from the sprues and then parts preparation which typically involves scraping some of the edges uh, or sanding them to be able to get the uh, parts to be uh, ready to put on the model. Uh, there are lots of little pieces that kind of fit together here and um, I also like to use these very fine tweezers uh, to be able to get these small pieces into where they belong. Um, once again you can see I'm using the extra thin cement to be able to get um, glue into those fine cracks. Uh, they do have some very nicely molded tubes and hoses and uh, these are glued into place and here you can see I'm showing you how I sand uh, these parts to be able to get them ready. Uh, sometimes they need an extra little sand to be able to fit but otherwise it's pretty much perfect. This little hatch can be molded open or closed and I chose to uh, glue it in the closed position. They do have an extra hose here and uh, once this is in position you can see how I'm using the extra thin cement from Tamiya to be able to glue it into place. What I do like about the extra thin cement is that uh, it dries very quickly. It doesn't leave a lot of extra residual glue uh, on the area that you're working with and it does seep into all the little cracks. Uh, the problem is that you use a lot of it if you use it all the time. So um, these next parts here um, are glued into place. I'm not showing you all of the gluing uh, process, but here's an example of the Revell Contactor Professional um, being used to glue uh, these pieces in. Now we're starting on the legs, and um, it took me a little while to figure out which pieces go with which. Um, some of these pieces required uh, rotation to be able to fit in, but uh, they fit very, very well. And uh, here you can see I'm gluing in those pieces because I don't want them to come undone even though they fit together very, very well. Uh, these are the uh, backs of the legs. And uh, once again, you can see me gluing in those different pieces. I use both types of glue uh, depending on the size of what I'm doing and whether I needed to um, seal that edge uh, or not. Here's the other side of the leg and um, that goes on to hold it into position. I do like to use um, clothespins. Um, there are different ways of holding pieces together. Some people use tape. I do use tape sometimes, but clothespins are very easy to put on and um, and take off as well. And um, they hold things while they're dry. Um, here is the uh, part of the foot uh, that goes on the bottom of the leg and um, sealing up the edges there uh, with glue. Now, um, once these uh, foot plates are on and uh, glued into place, they can still be adjusted if you don't glue the hinge, which I tried not to do so that you could still position it uh, in different ways.
So here I am putting together the uh, hinges uh, for the legs. As you can see, I have not glued them, but I did glue the cap in place. Uh, that way it would not fall out. And then these other parts here, these are the uh, side hinges for the legs. And uh, I glue the middle section here, uh, but not the actual hinges. That way you can still reposition the legs uh, whatever way you want to. This is very helpful uh, because when you build a model, it might be off balance. And if you can reposition the legs, you can actually put it onto a, um, a stance that will allow it to balance. As I continue to build the rest of the leg here, I'm putting on the armor plating for the joints and uh, then finally building the rest of the leg assembly. Now we're putting together the um, hinge that will connect the body parts. You can see the absolutely perfect molding. It goes together perfectly, required almost no sanding at all. Now we're building the uh, main uh, cockpits and I'm using the Revell contactor uh, glue again. You can see that the parts go together so well. Um, it is absolutely perfect, the molding quality uh, for this model. So we're building the rest of the uh, cockpit here. These parts uh, fit together. I'm only putting together what I'm going to be able to paint um, at once. And so these two parts I'm actually keeping separate. Uh, here these parts are um, belong to the front and the parts that were in the back I kept separate. Uh, now I'm going to be gluing this part together as well and this is for uh, the bottom of the cockpit's uh, cabin area. Here you can see I'm putting on the side plating for the cockpit and uh, even though I did put this on now it actually ended up being a little bit difficult uh, sliding the front piece on and you'll see later on why because I had to uh, lift them up a little bit. Here is the top of the uh, cockpit and this is all going together with glue as well and this is the hatch and then we're going to put some um, uh, bars on the top of it uh, for holding. Over here we're putting the sides on. These are where the weapons are mounted and I uh, initially glued them with the um, thicker glue and then put some traces of the thin glue around the edges to seep into the cracks and then um, mounting some additional hoses. All of these parts that I'm putting together, I'm doing this because I want to be able to paint them all together and uh, so that's why the front of it is left off. Again, you can see I'm using the uh, Revell contactor and the Tamiya Thin Cement these are the um, hatch covers and we've got some additional little weapons. This is the gun that goes um, underneath the front of the uh, cabin and initially when I put that together I put that uh, together backwards and I had to redo that and take it apart uh, but this thing will move around and actually needs to go the other way around. So um, this is then mounted on the bottom but uh, I actually chose to keep this off until I had finished painting it. The hatch cover goes on next and that is glued into place and we're starting to build the side weapons and this is done with, uh, with glue and these are then painted uh, while they're on the model so you'll see I will actually mount them on the side of the model because they're all going to be painted the same color. Check the mic and make sure it sound right boys.
now I'm working on the Wookie and I'm using the thicker glue initially just to get most of it together and then I use the thin glue to um, melt the sides also helps to get rid of that a uh, little bit of that edge and uh, while this is drying um, then I can then move on to the next piece so I actually wanted to have these uh, pilots have their arms down or at least one of their arms down on the control so here I am using a razor saw very fine blade to be able to cut off the arm it's very fine so it removes very little material uh, but now I can adjust the position of the arm and uh, I'm going to glue that in place but I first want to make sure it's in the correct um, position so I put the uh, pilot inside and then I put a little dab of glue on there and now I'm going to put the arm down and I'm going to glue it in place but that way it is down uh, at the correct angle that I want now that that is dry I also want to fill the uh, back of the pilot because for some reason there's a big hole in the back uh, the uh, leg and lower back area you won't really see but the upper back area you will so I'm using this is Tamiya uh, putty uh, dries fairly quickly once that has dried now I'm priming these uh, pilot figures and I gave it a light, light sanding on the back as well I like to use the uh, Vallejo uh, gray primer it helps to show uh, some of the edges and uh, imperfections now I'm also going to prime while I've got the primer out I'm also going to prime the Wookiee, and uh, this helps to also get rid of that uh, the brown color. I can then see uh, the edges uh, correctly. Now, I do have the primer already in my um, airbrush, and so I have all the parts ready to go. I like to get all the pieces together, and when I'm airbrushing one color, I just airbrush everything that color. Um, that way, I don't need to remix the uh, color all the time so here we're doing the legs and as you notice I'm spraying at 45 degrees uh, to the two surfaces that way I can hit both surfaces rather than spraying dead on one and uh, missing the other so this is the same Vallejo gray primer that I'm using it is thinned out uh, because otherwise it doesn't go through the airbrush very well so it's about a two to one ratio um, I am really just spraying everything here uh, to be able to good, get a good prime uh, over the plastic. Same thing for the top of the um, command module and just spraying everything here with the uh, primer. All right, boys. Now that the primer is all dry, now I'm using a Vallejo Black. This is also a primer, uh, but I like to use it from undercoat. And uh, I am now doing my pre-shading. So it's a really rough uh, pre-shade. I'm not looking for any fine details, but I just want to get some shadows. Uh, this is all sprayed underneath the final coat. So I'm using this black um, primer, and so it gives some, some of these shadows. I spray really anything that has a significant edge, some of the larger areas and some of the panels as well. Um, and, and you'll see later on, uh, once I put the final color down, why that is. So now I'm spraying the final color and I chose to do a medium gray and um, it's a fairly decent coat of, of color and here you can see I'm coloring up most of the black um, but leaves behind a slight shadow. Most of it does get covered up 
uh, but it helps to give you something uh, to show some distortion or change in the color so it's not quite the usual boring bland everything is gray color but while I do have my medium gray in the airbrush I am airbrushing all the parts so you can see this is just all parts going together and I have them uh, stuck to these uh, wooden sticks and I use a putty just like a regular mounting putty uh, just to help hold them in place so we're getting the good uh, good dose of medium gray covering up everything and as you can see it slowly hides that black so you can put more or less on it depending on what you want um, I like to have a slight um, shadow visible so I, I paint most of it out and here you can see I'm finishing up the rest of the uh, base um, of the uh, where the legs are going to go in there Okay, now that my airbrushing is done and everything is dry, now I'm going to be hand painting some of the details. And I use this um, brush technique uh, where I just uh, paint most of it uh, the color that I want. This is just uh, black, and then I will um, dry brush some of the surface details. So here I'm painting the central console, and this is all going on with um, just regular flat black. Right, so now that is drying, now I move on to the uh, Wookiee, and I'm using a very dark brown here. And uh, I wanted to get the same sort of color um, aspect as um, the uh, Chewbacca from Star Wars. And so I've got dark brown with uh, some light brown that I'll be painting on in a little bit. Uh, but I get the base color down. Here comes the uh, medium brown and um, painting the rest of the... Uh, arms and legs as well as the hindquarters and face. And now while that's drying I move on to the pilots 
and um, I am painting them. Uh, these are their boots. They're going to be black, and then um, we'll paint some of the finer details. They've got some uh, eyewear uh, that is black, and then I paint the uh, helmets this dark green color. Now, while that is drying, I then move back to the Wookiee. Uh, this is now dried, and I um, add some more uh, brown uh, to the face. Now I'm switching back to the pilots, and uh, so as you can see, I will switch backwards and forwards as I paint on one piece, let it dry, work on the other. And uh, now I'm painting his bag, and that's going to be a, a lighter brown color. And then there's some uh, leather for the uh, belt that he wears uh, with his ammunition. Now we're going back to the pilots, and I'm painting their um, harness, and this is a, a lighter green color. Uh, now we're back in the cockpit uh, while the pilots are drying, and I am just doing some dry brushing here to be able to bring up some of the detail uh, for some of the switches, and I'm using silver, so I put a little bit of silver on the uh, on the brush and then brushed most of it off and then uh, brushing it over some of the edges to be able to get some wear and tear as well as show the silver buttons same thing on the sides as well Now we're back to the pilot and I am painting their uh, belt buckle and this is going to be a, a dark green olive drab color and um, while this is happening the uh, cockpit is busy drying. So I didn't like the end result for the uh, helmets and so I used uh, glossy nail polish and painted the top of them and it came out much better. So now I'm sealing everything and so I'm using a matte uh, sealant, the uh, clear coat from Vallejo. This is matte, doesn't uh, make it shiny, and um, that way I get the same uh, finish, but it does seal in the, uh, the different colors. And while I have it in the airbrush, I'm going to seal all the parts, and so I uh, have all the parts ready to go. They're all dried now from our previous uh, painting, and we're now going to seal everything with a matte. Uh, clear coat. using the Tamiya panel line accent and this is a very thin uh, pigment so it really gets sucked up into the uh, crevices and cracks and all the recesses and uh, then you can also wipe it off once it is dry it'll leave behind the crevices and the panel lines but I like to use this a lot on the edges as well as the um, some of the surface detail uh, because it really helps to show the detail of the model and um, bring some of it to life. The important thing about using this is to use it uh, somewhat sparingly and make sure that you've shaken it uh, very well before you uh, start using it. It helps to get the pigment off the bottom and back into solution. Once you have used this and it is dry, uh, then you can use some lacquer thinners to remove it. You can see I'm not painting the whole thing. This is really just touching some of the edges here. You can see I just get a little dab and the panel line just sucks it up there through capillary action. Uh, but it definitely adds some um, physical appearance to it.
our front chest of our pilots, uh, so you can see some of the detail a little bit better. So here we go, I'm using uh, some lacquer thinners and a Q-tip uh, or earbud, and um, you can't scrape too much in one area because it will remove all the paint if you keep going, and so I will keep changing out these earbuds or Q-tips uh, to be able to avoid that. Uh, they can also leave behind little strands, so when they get too badly damaged, you have to remove them or just throw them away. So here you can see I'm getting rid of most of the um, panel line accent, but it leaves behind the uh, cracks as well as some smudginess and dirtiness, and it helps to um, weather the, the model. Some of the areas are a little difficult to get into, um, but we managed to do that uh, still the same. Yeah, I probably need some more uh, thinners, so yep, there you go adding some more thinners. So you can uh, actually let it dry and um, you can do it again without removing too much paint. Uh, but if you keep going while the paint is melting, uh, then it definitely will smudge your paint job. everything is dried and now I'm putting together the um, cockpit and uh, that's done with glue as you can see here I had glued the um, armor on and I had to lift that up uh, to be able to get it to come together so I probably should have left part of that unglued initially but it did come together and it came together very well uh, as I said this is a very very well molded model so now we're mounting the uh, chin gun and uh, that is mobile so I can move around and I'm going to use some glue here and uh, actually end up using yeah, glue on the um, bottom area to be able to get them to stay um, on the seat because I don't want them rattling around. As you can see, the legs were a little bit difficult to get uh, in because the fit is so snug, but it finally did go in. And then uh, same thing with the top here. I actually did have to remove a little uh, piece in the front uh, to be able to get it to come together. Now, at the end, I thought that the Wookiee was way too dark, and so I lightened it up with some uh, orange um, and with uh, a little bit of brown and orange. So I felt like this happened to make it a little bit better and uh, lighter. I was looking at some pictures of Wookiees uh, from the Star Wars film and I tried to match the color scheme that they had in terms of their hair uh, with the dark and light browns as well as some of the yellows. Now I'm using some brass just to paint the uh, ammunition cases on his belt and um, I did this all the way around. Now the model is done. Mm -hmm. 